I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. I'm uh, Michael Fassbender's Penis. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. That we do. Thank you for listening, everyone. This week, uh, by the title, you can tell we're doing 2011 Shame, directed by Steve McQueen, uh, starring Michael Fassbender, Carrie Mulligan, James Badge Dale, and Nicole Bahari. I think, is it Bahari? I don't know. I don't know. Sure. Uh, if this is your first time listening Joey to this yes. podcast, what? Huh? <laughs> Bahari? Bagura? Like she's going to be hairy? Uh, if this is your first time listening to the podcast, we take pod, uh, podcast. Yeah, we take other podcasts now. Oh my God. Can we do that? <laughs> we take movies that have doubters, sad, fucked up endings, and we try to find a glimmer of hope, uh, a ray of sunshine at the end of the movie, uh, that usually offer, doesn't offer one. Uh, so yeah, I actually did my homework this time. I have one. I don't know if you have one. Good? Kinda. Kinda? All right. Well, before we get started and talk more about this movie, what is your relationship like with this movie, Mally? When was the the first time you saw it? What are your feelings on it? Uh, I'm a big Steve McQueen fan. Same. And yeah, this movie rules. What, is this your favorite of his? Because I think it's a favorite of mine. Oh. Hunger's really good. 12 Years is really good. 12 Years a Slave is my least favorite. Yeah? It would probably be this Hunger than 12 Years a Slave. Probably for me, too. And I like 12 Years a Slave a lot. A, he's got a new one coming out, I think. Yeah, you he know probably it's going to be depressing as fuck. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, it's not his thing. Uh, I think I checked this one out before I saw Hunger. Because it was probably like 2013 or so. I had a friend, or 2012, I think, a friend recommended it to me. I uh, recommend that I check out Hunger, but then I was looking through the uh, Steve McQueen's IMDb credits and I saw this movie instead. I was like, oh, I should watch this one first. This sounds way Yo, more interesting. Hold up. He's doing a movie called Widows that comes out in 2018, written by Gillian Flynn, mm-hmm. um, starring Viola Davis. Of course it stars Viola Davis. I'm Viola Davis, she's in everything now. She is literally... Dude, have you seen how many shorts he has Yeah, done? he does a lot of short films. Oh my God. But yeah, shame. I watch those. Uh, had a budget, a very modest budget of only six and a half million, and it had a worldwide gross of seventeen point seven million. And the film is seventy nine percent certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a quaint little film. It's very quiet. I think a lot of dick. A lot of dick. Um, a lot of everything. A lot of. Yeah, I was about to say yeah, a lot of everything. Um, but definitely, there's not a whole lot going on in terms of like in terms of the scenes and everything it's like like you could definitely see the 6.5 million is a, is is exactly what this movie needs to be mm-hmm. uh do you want to talk about anything else about shame before we get into the trailer no all right let's listen to the trailer what do you think of this trailer gorgeous right perfect i think it's perfect it's almost like its own little short film in itself like yeah. It's very beautiful to look at. It's everything is exactly what it needs to be for this trailer, and it doesn't give anything away. No, not at all. So let's get into this film. I think we are going to try and go beat by beat for this one, but I guess I'll ask you at the end. There's a question I have about what you think this movie is really about that I want to get to at the end. But okay. let's build up there first. So we start off uh, with Brandon, who is Michael Dick Fassbender. Swinging. <laughs> <laughs> he's in that is what we start out with he's in bed just laying there uh and it's obviously it's early morning and he just doesn't want to get up maybe uh but he finally does and i gotta say the soundtrack kicks in right at the top very ominous score that i love mm-hmm. but it's like bam you're in it like there's no build up to it yeah. uh he gets on the subway i'm th- this place- a dark and ominous score and here's a penis exactly this takes place in new york right yeah, yeah. All right, so he gets on the subway. Maybe the Chelsea neighborhood. Yeah, and uh, he spots this woman on this train, um, and she kind of, like, gives him a smile, and then we go to a flashback, and this is where you get your dick swinging. Uh, oh, that's right. It's Fosmer walking through his apartment naked. Uh, his, he gets a voicemail from a woman saying, hey, please pick up. I know you're there. And we kind of find out that this is later. This is his sister, Sissy. <laughs> Very... Brilliant writing right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then we go back to another Shut flashback <laughs> where Brandon buys a prostitute uh, that comes over to his house. Oh, I guess an escort, really. Comes in over to his place. 
Uh, she starts undressing, and he tells Wait, her to. Isn't escort just like the PC way of saying prostitute? Pretty much, but I think I like to think escorts are like you call, they come over, prostitute, you are you literally go pick them up and not go somewhere. Necessarily, there's just varying levels of prostitution. I'm, I'm not very enthralled or knowledgeable in the world of prostitutes, Mally. So I'd go by what I assume. I'll explain it to you later. Okay. Uh, but yeah, she starts undressing, and he tells her with one word. I think this is, might be the first word of the movie uh, from him. Is just slowly. Tells her to get undressed mm-hmm. slower. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next morning, we're assuming there's like a earring that's left on the on the floor. We get a nice close up shot of that. Yeah. And another voicemail from Sissy. The cinematography in this movie is great, by the way. I'm just going to throw this out there. Absolutely. We get another voicemail from Sissy that I think might be the same voicemail. It's her again saying, hey, pick up. I know you're there. That or she repeats herself a lot. Yeah. Uh, Fosbender, well, Brandon is masturbating in the shower while this is happening. Yeah. And then we go back to the train. A lot's happening at the top of this movie. Oh, yeah. No explanation. Um, he, again, the woman on the train smiles at him. She kind of crosses her leg. And it, I... I at first, the first time I saw this movie, I thought maybe she was like very like covertly masturbating on this train, but I think she's just really enthralled with Brandon that she's like having hot flashes. Um, but yeah, she gets up and she goes to stand up. I guess like the the support beams, the support poles in the middle of the subway. She goes up and she puts her hand on it, and you realize she's got an engagement ring on, a big fat rock too. Uh, and Brandon gets up and joins her and falls her off the train, but he loses her. And it's basically like she gets up, puts her arm on her hand on the pole, and it's simulating like uh, she's kind of inviting Brandon to like go to follow her. But then once he gets behind her, she kind of like has like a change of heart in her eyes. And she, when she gets off the train, she just bolts pretty much. Uh, then we go to Brand- <laughs> what I like to call different segments of this movie, but we go to, with Brandon at work. And he's kind of in a meeting and zoned out. And we just hear someone say, I find you disgusting. And he looks up and he's basically this, his boss is giving this pitch. This is what people think. And this is how our business, well, I, don't, which, I don't even know what he does. I think he's just like an, I have no idea. an executive of something. I'm going to ask you that. I have no idea. Um, but as uh, Brandon goes back to work, he finds a note on his computer and turns out uh, his computer has quote unquote from what his boss says, some kind of virus. So they have to take it to get it cleaned. Um, then we go to Fosbender in the bathroom where he masturbates at work and we go yep. Brandon at home and uh, he sits down, takes some Chinese food out of the fridge and a beer and oh starts. Oh my God. How good does Chinese sound? Oh yeah. It sounds great. Holy shit. Starts uh, watching porn on his laptop and I'm assuming he's been there for a couple hours by the what way. What a weird food to eat while watching pornography. Well, is there a better food? I usually don't sit down and have a meal if I'm watching porn. Well, I mean, I just feel like, you know, there would be better foods. Like a snowball, maybe? (laughs) Ah, shit. (laughs) Anyways, uh, as he's watching porn, his cell phone starts to ring and he ignores it. And his house phone starts to ring and he ignores it. And a voicemail kicks on on his house phone uh, and and on the answer machine. And Sissy again, and she's crying, asking him to pick up the phone. And she says, I have cancer. I have one week to live. And she keeps going on and on. And he deletes the voicemail like right there. Savage. At, as she's delivering, he goes right back to watching his porn. Doesn't give a fuck. So Brandon is out at the club with his boss. And his boss is hitting on women at the bar top. James Badgedale. Yeah. We mentioned that. Yeah, James Badgedale. And, Dude, and I love him. He's pretty like, good. He pops up and like various movies and it's always like oh that guy yeah like iron man 3 mm-hmm. he was awesome man and i just said i was talking about this earlier 13 hours mm-hmm. he plays like the head of their like squad oh, okay he's fucking great in well, that movie and i think he's got fairly decent game in the scene but fosmer comes in you can't i'm sorry you can't compete if you're like trying to run game while Michael Fassbender is trying to run, I'm sorry, you're gonna lose. Yeah, basically, Milton Bradley <laughs> would lose to Michael Fassbender. <laughs> he's sitting there. Uh, James Vagdell is sitting there, and he's like hitting on this woman, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm very good with details." And the woman goes, "Oh, really?" And she closes her eyes, and she says, "All right, blue or green?" And he's like, "Oh, it's green, blue." And he, he's wrong. And basically, uh, Brandon walks in, and he goes, uh, "Hey, uh, uh, Brandon, check this out." And she closes her eyes again. And he's like, "Blue or green?" And he goes, "Brown." Turns out the woman's got brown eyes. Holy shit. This dude is 
Like you can't run, you can't beat game on this right here. Uh, anyways, uh, they have some drinks and they have a toast uh, to quote unquote nailing it. Uh, apparently, Brandon had a really good pitch today, but I also think it's funny the wording here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Brandon's boss goes and dance with the, with the blonde on the dance floor. Uh, at the end of the night, apparently his boss, I think his name is David, is a little too wasted. So Brandon puts him in a taxi. Could and, not hang. And then he proceeds to get in this blonde's guts because she she pulls up, offers him a ride, and then they're just fucking on the side of the street. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, As you do in New York City. Absolutely. Brandon comes home to find out his uh, there's some music playing in his apartment. So he grabs a bat. Uh, he goes, he hears someone taking a shower. He goes into the shower, about to swing the bat, and turns out Sissy is in the shower, and she has a key. She says, you know, he says, why don't you ever call before you come over? And she said, I tried calling. You don't ever pick up. And there's kind of an awkward, every scene with Sissy and Brandon is awkward. Yeah. Uh, she, they're all weird as shit. They, they have no sense of shame uh, in ah. front of each other. Uh, no, oh, shit. they're very uh, modest. <laughs> Don't really care about covering up anything because Sissy is fully naked, and Brandon kind of tosses her a towel, but she just keeps having their conversation as she's holding mm-hmm. the towel. Uh, so Brandon basically is watching uh porn with his sister in the other room. Uh. Sissy is on the phone crying to someone. She's saying, you know, I won't go out. I don't want to go out. I love you. I think this is like an ex-boyfriend. She's trying to convince to let her come back. Yeah, I believe that's what's implied. But we'll come back to this later because this is a question I have for you. Okay. Uh, The next morning, Sissy is... I got to say, Carrie Mulligan acts is Crushing damn it. hot in this movie to me. Oh, like uh, I thought you were talking about her acting. That too. But uh, yeah. Just walking around in these long see-through shirts, which again, she's with her brothers. Awkward, but at the same time, you're like, meh. Anyways, uh, the next morning, Sissy finds that woman's earring, the, the escort's earring on Brandon's floor. Uh, and Brandon agrees to let her, let her stay for a few days at his apartment because she doesn't have anywhere else to go. Then they're they're waiting on the subway train. Sissy is apparently a singer, and she's got she's gonna be performing tonight, I think. But she's standing on the subway like platform. I forgot about this scene until I watched it this time. Mm-hmm. She's standing on the pl- subway platform, she's and she's like House of Cards flashback. Like, no! <laughs> she's Sissy, leaning no! a little, she's leaning a little too close to the subway track, and Brandon pulls her back. Of ask her how she is with money. She says, oh, "I've got plenty of money." Uh, and then they have like a nice cute little moment where he's got like some like lint on his shoulder. She goes to try and knock it off. He says, I like it there. Then he takes it off, puts it on her shirt. It's a little cute moment. Uh, and we're back at Brandon at work again. And Brandon's boss wants to go out again tonight. And he's Brandon mentions, oh, my sister's performing at this club. And he's like, perfect. We'll go there and we'll watch her sing. It'll be great. And then Brandon masturbates at work again, or at least it's implied. Because we see him walk to the bathroom door, it closed, and then there's a long. Oh no, he pause. definitely jerked it. Oh yeah. Again. The dude, the two go to the club uh, that night, and Which Sissy. Like, yeah, dude, you want to go see my sister sing? Cool. All right, I'm gonna go jerk it in the bathroom real quick. <laughs> and Sissy sings. What do you think of? Uh, like, okay, in his defense, before you go out, rub one off. Sure. Yeah. Common practice. Not work necessarily. But not when. Not okay. Not when you're going to see your sister. That should that shouldn't be on your not mind. Be a worry. <laughs> what do you think of Sissy's performance here? She sings the, the basically the New York theme song. Yeah, New York, New York, baby. It's great. It's good. Uh, and if memory serves, it was done like live. Yeah, I'll we'll, we'll get that into the trivia section. I actually have that on there. Oh. Uh, Brandon shows a little tear, and then Sissy comes over and she's ecstatic. She's super excited, and like a kid looking for her approval. He's like, "What do you think of it?" And he, he says, "It was interesting." <laughs> Uh, and then Brandon's boss kind of rides him out. Oh, he was crying. Uh, and they're ordering drinks. And basically, Brandon's the third wheel now. And Brandon's boss is trying to get it in with Sissy. Mm-hmm. And he does. He gonna get it in. This is another uncomfortable scene. They're riding in a taxi. and <laughs> There's a lot of uncomfortable scenes in this da- movie. D- uh, David and Sissy are just making out in the back of the taxi with Brandon sitting right next to him. <laughs> Uh, they go back to Brandon's apartment, and Brandon basically has to listen to his sister getting fucked by his boss in his own apartment. Yeah. Mm-mm. He starts slamming some doors around and says, fuck it, I'm going for a run. 
So he goes out running, uh, and it's the scene we see in the trailer, him just kind of jogging through New York City. Uh, Love that, though. This is a, the another important scene that I want to come back to later, but Brandon's trying to sleep that night, and uh, Sissy tries to come into his bedroom and cuddle with him. And he's like, sissy, get out, you know, you know, go sleep on the couch, whatever. And then he just explodes on her. Get the fuck out. And she takes mm-hmm. off running. Uh, but yeah. The next morning, Brandon's boss uh, calls him into David into his office. Yep. Wait. Yeah. Brandon's boss calls got Brandon into his office. Got that hard drive. And basically says, look, dude, your computer is gross. Your hard drive is filthy. And he says, do you think it was your intern? Yeah, it's like, because like whoever is spending because like they got a virus on like the computer system at work and it spawned from his computer because of all the porn and he's basically saying the boss i don't know if david knows but he's basically like do you think it was your intern because you know basically anyone spending company time doing this shit has got to go or something mm-hmm. like that and he's listing off everything he's like blah 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 you know you got interracial you gang bangs blah 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 he says cream pie i don't even know what that is <laughs> which more power to you if you don't know what that is. Yeah. Um, and Brandon plays dumb. He's like, oh, I don't know. And then he hits on, Brandon hits on his secretary and ends up uh, having a date with her. Yeah. And I mean, I, I'm not sure who this woman is, but she is a fine black woman. Oh, God. Or just a fine you. woman in general. She doesn't have to be. But she is, a, she is a black woman. And Brandon, t- this is like the first kind of, oh, wait, no, the, the escort he gets is black too. Maybe she's got a thing for black girls. I don't know. Awesome. Uh, but they what go on a date. Her name? They go on a date, and there is an extremely long winner during this dinner scene. Oh, uh, the long-ass one take. Oh, wait. That's Nicole Bihari. Bihari? Or Bihari? Yeah. Yeah, she's beautiful, dude. Oh, she's been in some stuff. Um, But yeah, they... Oh, she was in one episode of Law & Order SVU. <laughs> St- See, that's why she looks familiar. Steve McQueen really loves doing these long winner shots. I think there's a 17-minute one in Hunger. Yeah, there is. But this, this one... Six yeah, I don't know why is what is the purpose of this one? Don't know, don't care. I'm a sucker for him. More of it. It's kind of cool too because it shows you the intimacy and like one the, take this whole fucking movie. The intimacy and the nervousness of like first time dates, and it's it's very playful and innocent. They have a great. I think they have a great date. Uh, they order some wine and some steak, I think, and then they're walking down uh, New York on the sidewalk, and he I, uh, he tells. Tells her to, to feel like a knot on the back of his head. And he says, that's a remnant of the Neanderthals. What do you make of that line? Basically saying, like, that there's, like, a spot in the back of his skull from, like, only a certain group of people <laughs> today would have that are, like, offspring of specific Neanderthals. Yeah, I don't know. I got nothing on that. I line. had no idea what it was supposed to mean. But, all right. Uh, they say, he asks her, you know, if you could be anything in any time, what would you be? Brandon says, I wanted to be a musician in the 60s. Which, Okay. I don't want to be the that musician in the eighties. Why? Because he said he wanted to like wait. No, I just it just clicked. Like he wishes he could have been a musician who lived in the sixties. I thought he was saying in the nineteen sixties, like when I was little, I wanted to be a musician. Oh, uh, now I just understood that's not what he was saying yeah. at all. Because I was like, that would make him like if he was born in nineteen sixty, <laughs> that'd make him fifty one. But no, he's basically saying if you could be alive and if in he's any 51, decade, fifty one. Yeah, holy. <laughs> and the secretary basically says, you know, I want to be right here right now. And he says, that's a boring answer. Uh, and basically he walks her to, not really to her house. He walks her to her to the subway uh, and then he goes home. And he starts masturbating that in the bathroom. A life thing. You yeah. don't walk someone home. You just walk them to their bus stop or their train yeah. stop. He walks, I love it. He goes home and starts masturbating. That shit. And Sissy walks in on him. And Brandon is livid. He goes out into the living room where she's at. She's on the couch. And Question. Yeah. What movie did the walk-in on someone masturbating scene better? This or Crazy Stupid Love? I think we need to talk about Kevin had the best one. <laughs> all right. You threw a curveball in the race. All right. All right. Uh, but yeah, he, he jumps on her. and he, Keep in mind, he's pretty much just got a towel around his waist. Dark she, on the race. she thinks he's just playing around, but he's basically like saying, why are you here? What are you doing within my life, basically? And then she gets very uncomfortable and upset and starts crying, tells her to get off of him. And uh, yeah, then Sissy walks into the kitchen and notices Brandon's laptop. She opens it up and there is a private chat with a 
basically a cam model, but this is like a personal cam model because she's specifically saying she can see Sissy and says, like, is Brandon there? I know what Brandon likes and pretty much starts, like, playing with herself. And Brandon comes in and just closes the laptop. Uh, Sissy leaves and Brandon begins... That's mine. Get away from it. (laughs) Sissy leaves and Brandon begins packing up all the porn in his house and he starts cleaning house. But not even that. He throws away his laptop. He He throws away goddamn everything. He cleans his fridge out. Like, he just starts unloading, like, everything. Uh, and then he, uh, the next day, I'm assuming, at work, Apparently he... French bread does it for him. <laughs> I think it's the next day. He's at work, and he decides he just wants to make out with the secretary right there. Uh, they leave work, which that's, what a privilege that must be. Yeah, right. They leave He's work. He's executive. Yeah. He takes her to this hotel room with this pretty awesome city view and we'll, the standard the standard hotel view. which that we'll come back to that because that's a very yeah significant thing too but he takes you to this hotel uh and they get she they start fooling around but she is super intimate with it when i feel like he just wants to get the job done yeah and i think that's what happens because he stops halfway through like before anything even happens really and she gets stressed and walks herself out so basically, I don't. Th- I think he just couldn't get it up with being such an intimate moment. Pretty much, yeah. And so he calls a prostitute over or an escort, and then <laughs> they rails her against yeah. the big ass window, the glass pane window, yeah. The city streets, and yeah, it's right. It's raw, right? You see everything. Then we cut to another interesting one. Um, Brandon sitting on his couch, and he's watching. Like one of those old school weird black and white cartoons. Mm-hmm. Very interesting choice. But Sissy comes in. She sits down next to him. And she says, will you just give me a hug? And then they fuck. Just, <laughs> just kidding. Just <laughs> that, I'd say I watched this kidding. movie with Priscilla and she had never seen it. And the scene where he comes home and finds her in the shower and it's super uncomfortable. She's like, is he going to fuck his sister in this movie? And I was like, you would think it's going there, but no. Um, so, but he, yes. Even Steve McQueen's like, okay, guys. Yeah. So he... Uh, she he puts his arm around her, gives her a hug, and then he basically he shames Sissy for sleeping with his boss, uh-huh. and tells her, uh-huh. "Yeah, I'm trying to throw him in as many times as I can," Shame. and tells her she needs to find a new place to live. She says, "I don't have anywhere else to go," and he says, "You're a burden. You know, don't you see what you're doing to me? You're a burden. I don't like having you around." And they get into basically an argument, and uh, he leaves. But I asked, "Why do you think there was a choice of the old cartoon?" Again, no idea. And I don't think there's an answer for it. I think they just they just went with it, but it 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 makes it interesting because there could have been anything playing on that TV, but just like the <sighs> complete opposite of porn, I guess. Maybe oh, wholesome. <laughs> Actually, I was gonna say wholesome card. No, old cartoons are like racist and as creepy. Fuck. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, we find Brandon on the subway train, and he's got a gash across his cheek. Um, and then we, he, we basically get to a flashback where he's at a bar and this woman approaches him mm-hmm. and he starts hitting on her and the lighting in this scene makes him look goddamn creepy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he starts hitting on this woman in the most provocative, like toxic kind of way you can, like basically saying that he wants to, does your, does your boyfriend go down on you? Cause I do. It's what I like to do. He basically slips his hand under her dress and like taste him, taste his fingers. It's very graphic, but then... Uh, a man. Like, approach- she's like reciprocating. She's reciprocating, but also like shocked at the same time. Like I think she just doesn't know what's going on, so she just goes with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then a man approaches the bar, and it turns out she's got a boyfriend. And uh, you know, he asks, "Is this guy giving you problems?" And Brandon goes, "No, I was just telling her how I would like to go down on her, fuck her in the ass, everything." <laughs> uh, and then he makes the boyfriend smell his fingers, which that's yeah. Like he just does not give up. No, nope. he even starts movie, laughing, and it's amazing. Uh, but Brandon, st- yeah, starts talking shit. He starts laughing. Uh, we cut to a little bit later. He tries to get into a club, but is not allowed in. Mm-hmm. And we find out that Brandon got jumped by that girl's boyfriend in an alleyway, and spit on everything else. And uh, why? Why? Shit out of him. We go. We cut back to the club uh, outside of the club where he can't get into, and he notices this guy across the street who enters this other club. That he follows him into, and it turns out it's a gay club. But not only is it a gay club, it is a violent, violently gay club. Yes, it is. It's like, all right, you know in 7, when the place they go, and they find, like, the lust guy? Yeah. 
it's like that same place. Yeah, it's, it's like just dark and dingy. It's but dark like with like the red lights, light district, pretty much. And there's like member everything you can think of. A member of Guar at one point. Everything you can think of. There's like men having sex with other men in the middle of the hallway. There's mm-hmm. glory holes everywhere. And Brandon's walking around just looking at everything, and this random man approaches him and starts like hardcore kissing him, like. And Brandon reciprocates, and not only that, he forces this guy down to basically give him a blowjob. As he's looking around, and it's very a uh, disorienting kind of scene. Like, oh yeah, it's very like m- trippy. What's going on? And it's like I don't know. There's a lot, like, just su- like the camera movement too. Yeah, like, it's spinning around and everything. It's very, it's all steady just cams. Just looking around. As fuck. But yeah, uh, Brandon also makes a phone call and goes over to this woman's house. Uh, while he's doing that, we hear Sissy leaving a very urgent and upsetting voicemail. Calling Brandon Again. saying, please come home. Um, while that she's leaving this voicemail, he's having a threesome with, with two women. A graphic. Very graphic. like, threesome, But a brilliantly well lit. I'm going to say it's graphic, but super artful. Because you see oh, dude. glimpses of things, but you don't see everything. And it's just like... You just see the the passion and like the movement of bodies. Like whoever DP'd this <laughs> <laughs> is again fucking brilliant. Who, mm, you know what? But uh, while it's we don't really, we don't get to hear any of the threesome, we hear Sissy's voicemail on the soundtrack building up, and she's basically saying, "We're not bad people. We just come from a bad place." And right after that line is delivered, uh, Brandon has uh, shed some no tears. More. The DP on this also did Place Beyond the Pines. There you go. Beautiful. And Hunger. Possible. And 12 Years a Slave. Possible future episodes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he has a, he shed some tears during this threesome. Uh, he takes the subway home and it comes to an emergency stop. Basically, something, there's been an accident up ahead and they have to evacuate the train. Uh, what do you think happened to make the train stop? Did someone jump in front of the train? Because when this that's, happens, I think you're spo- the, you're led to believe that Sissy no, jumped in front like of the, the train. Kind of red herring, like you think because of that scene at the beginning, like your head the music like, oh fuck, she jumped in front of the train. Shit. Yeah. House of cards. Not only that, they they keep keep, keep pushing this red herring forward because he, he gets off the train. He notices some some accidents happen, so he picks up his phone and tries calling Sissy, but she won't answer. Yep. And so he literally sprints all the way back home to his apartment. Great. Scene. Yeah, he sprints all the way to his apartment, busts open the bathroom door, and Sissy is on the floor, bleeding out. She's slit her wrist, mm-hmm. and this is a beautifully shot shot. Oh yeah, beautifully shot shot too, because it's like and then the bathroom, everything is white pretty much except for Brandon's clothes and the blood all over, and it's super well lit, and it's like you think that's it, this is the end of the movie, but uh, it's not. And if the movie ended right here. I don't know how you come back from this. This is like there's no darker ending than that, right? No. But Sissy is actually alive, and she's in the hospital. She took that to some IVs, and she's in her bed. And Brandon Brandon notices that she's got several cut wounds on her arm. So this is not the first time she's done this for sure. Uh, Brandon goes for a walk, and he walks until he pretty much can't walk no more, and just collapses in the rain, and just starts crying his fucking eyes out like bawling in the middle of uh was it was almost like the docks yeah like, pretty much yeah. God, so it god this movie looks so good we fade out and then we come back up to uh, like an indiscriminate amount of time later uh dun, dun, dun. brandon's getting on the subway and he sees the woman from the beginning of the movie mm-hmm. again who is super excited to see him she is thrilled. she is ready to go she gets up Stands up and does the same thing she did at the beginning of the movie. Puts her hand on the, the pole and still, got that, ring still got that huge engagement ring on. She tries to initiate some flirting. And Brandon looks at her kind of wide-eyed, open mouth, And it's very hesitant. But uh, we just cut to black. That's that's the end of the movie. Yeah. Uh, super ambiguous kind of ending. But also kind of like it doesn't leave you feeling good. No. I, although Sissy is still alive, it's... It basically feels like she's dead. I, like, you feel like... I forgot she lives at the end of this movie, and I was like, oh, yeah, she fucking slits her wrists, and yeah. she's dead, but... No, I like, I honestly straight up forgot how this movie ended. Just like, 
whenever we suggested it, it was like, oh, yeah, shame. Yeah, yeah, that movie probably has a downer ending. Mm -hmm. Then I watched it. I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, it does. Jesus. I forgot what happened up until the point of when they have to get off the train. I'm like, oh, yeah, now I remember how this movie is. Yeah. And I forgot that she was still alive. I was like, oh, yeah, this is the end of the movie. And then, nope, there's still a few more minutes left. But yeah, oh, yeah, that's shit. that is shame from 2011. Uh, talking about some trivia, uh, the scene where, where, like you mentioned, the scene where Brandon hears his sister singing in the restaurant was actually shot in real time. Yeah, uh, all the main characters had cameras on them, and it was shot at three in the morning. Damn. Um, and Michael Fosbender and James Badgedale's reactions are 100 percent genuine. So Brandon crying I'm, was. I'm a sucker for that kind of shit. This isn't necessarily my notes, but also the scene in the beginning where Sissy leaves a voicemail and Brandon's urinating in the toilet was actually real yeah that was actually <laughs> and he had to do that three was takes michael fassbender peeing in it yeah three takes yep uh the first time michael fassbender saw the film with his dad uh both were oh god both were relieved that their mother could not make the screening that day oh shit uh and carrie mulligan stated that on the graham norton show that her dad is not allowed to see the movie can't blame her on that one. Yeah. For those, you definitely, if you're a man, you definitely don't want your mom to see this. If you're a woman, you definitely don't want your dad to see it. Um, in a review of this film, uh, in Art of Psychiatry, uh, psychiatry psych, uh, psychiatrist Dr. Abby Seltzer had uh, diagnosed Sissy uh, as suffering from borderline personality disorders. I believe it. Yeah. I just, she kind of fought this back and forth. just as much about her as it is about him. And it's really, I think it's more her story. Yeah, for sure. Like, cause she has, she goes through a lot of ups and downs in this movie. Mm -hmm. I would like to see this movie from her point of view. I think that'd be interesting. Shame too. The shamaning. God damn it. Uh, the sex scene with Michael Fassbender and the the prostitute pressed up against the glass uh, of the room yeah. is yeah it's in Manhattan Standard Hotel and this hotel has become synonymous with people doing this since this movie's come out. People will constantly just have open sex against the glass in their rooms and people will you know either for enjoyment or purely for the thrill of it. But a lot of people have like walker by passerbys have noted that they've seen tons of people having sex up in the hotel. And it actually cost one couple their life because apparently in 2013, in 2013 a Chinese couple fell to their desk while reenacting the scene from this movie when the window uh, they were leaning against gave way. Holy fucking shit. Really? Yeah, you didn't hear about that? I did not know yeah. about that. I didn't know it was, based, it was because of this movie, but definitely I heard about that. I think now they have reinforced the windows, but yeah, this hotel I is... I fucking hope so. This hotel is like notorious now for people openly having sex and now a couple having died from it. Holy fucking shit. Mm hmm So before we get into our silver linings, the big question I want to ask you is what Jeez. I'm gonna ask you two questions, I guess. One, what okay. do you think is this movie is really about? Is it as black and white as the movie makes it out to be? About sex addiction or addiction in general, or is there something else going on? I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't think it's just straight about sex addiction because, like I said, I think it's as, it's as much her story as it is his. Mm -hmm. Do you think she's addicted to something as well? Because she seems like it. She seems yeah. like she's addicted to some kind like, of. I don't know. As like she puts it in, like it's about like it's more about these two people who they're not bad people. They're just I don't know, do bad things. Is that the word I'm looking for? Well, that's my that's gonna lead me into my second question, which is I think and. I believe Steve McQueen has come out and denied this, but I think this movie is about incest and the repercussions huh? of it. Because, um, uh, you think they the, fucked? I do at some point in their life, I think they did. I think because not only would that, like, because every time they show Brandon, he can't be intimate with a woman at all. And then when Sissy comes around, he, he's, he's pretty much up. Riding high until Sissy comes around, in which case everything turns for him. Like he sleeps with that random woman at the club that he had no problem picking up. Uh, he sleeps with the prostitutes. He's got his porn and his laptop and his Chinese food. He seems very, at least, manageable. See, I think they were, I don't know if it was necessarily like incest. Well, or do you think they were abused as them, children? I think they were abused. Sexually abused as by like their father or something? Yeah. Or their by, mother? By someone at some yeah. point, probably. Um, but yeah, that was always my take. Steve McQueen's come out and pretty much said that it's not about that, which just I think is just 
misleading because it's got to be Fuck it's, you, Steve it's got to be some kind of abuse in the way that they act around one another Dude, like Steve McQueen will probably tell you that hunger isn't about a hunger strike <laughs> probably but yeah I feel like that's definitely got because that would explain so much hey, about this movie what's 12 years a slave about uh capitalism the cotton industry <laughs> fuck you Steve um, McQueen yeah I and not only that but the no, lack I love your movies yeah the lack of quote unquote shame between the two characters yeah. like they have no it's a very ironic title yeah there's they don't give a fuck there's no indecency between the two until they act on their their uh, addictions whereas it's Brandon watching porn and masturbating in the bathroom to sissy sleeping with his boss and everything and cutting I maybe she's addicted to to cutting a wrist maybe that's her 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 yeah, uh fault certainly possible uh, but yeah, I think it's definitely either abuse or incest. I think you can look at it either way. Uh, I, I don't think it's laid out in black and white as that. I definitely think there are hints throughout the movie mm-hmm. constantly. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that's what the movie's about ultimately. Uh, do you, what is your silver lining for shame? James Badgedale got laid. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Nope, that's it. That's all you got? That's all I got. So you're coming in with the weeks? Well, in, in my defense... I took the good one? You took two. Okay. Well, as long you as we... took the only actual ones. So <laughs> well, go you, ahead. Do you want the first one and I'll no, take the no, second one? No, 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 no. I got mine. I'm okay. perfectly happy with mine. All right. I will say that Sissy is still alive. That's one. And Brandon seems to be on the path of recovery. That's two. But I also put a tag light on the end of that, but... Is he? Uh, because no, what you actually I put, but is her? Yeah, <laughs> what he typed, ladies and gentlemen, was but is her? But is her jackass? Is her brother gonna be okay? Uh, because the ending is kind of ambiguous as to what uh, Brandon's gonna do next. Is he gonna act on this woman who's engaged, mm-hmm. or is he gonna like finally be able to say no? Is he gonna be able to have an intimate relationship with someone again? Like I want to say he doesn't act on it, but. I don't think he does. <laughs> they, they, well, that's true. It's not that kind of movie. But you, normally with an ending like this, you would see like maybe he cracks a smile or at least a, like a Mona Lisa kind of smile or something or makes a move. But he doesn't. He just kind of just stares at her blankly like, yeah. I don't know what you want from me. Like a wax fucking statue. So I think he is on the path to recover. Especially yeah, after this. Penis. Especially after this has happened with his sister. I definitely think there's uh, definitely some some room for improvement. But I think he's on his way. On the note of improvement, mm-hmm. we need to improve our moods. Mm. What's your alternative? Beautiful segue. Like that. <laughs> I'm going in the total opposite direction. A movie that is if it's not an old black and white cartoon. Movie, <laughs> it's not grounded in reality. It is the most is the furthest thing from reality. Oh my god! <laughs> but I'm going with another movie that features Michael Fosman, although not that predominantly in a one of the best scenes I think in movie history as oh, the yeah. past decade. Uh, Inglorious Bastards, for sure. Fuck yes. Fun movie, leaves you happy at the end. Who doesn't like killing Nazis, right? Or punching Nazis. Or blowing <laughs> them up, or shooting them in the face. Or shooting their balls or off. Li- or s- fucking scalping them. They just fuck Nazis up in that movie. It's a fun movie. God damn. <laughs> what about yours? What is the movie you want to watch after I'm watching going Shane? For, I'm going for another Michael Fassbender starring vehicle. Fun. Frank. That's a fun movie. Fun... Weird movie, but Weird, fun. A little fucked up, but fun. Fucking amazing. He movie. delivers a great performance in that too. Oh my god! He Without it. with barely seeing his face, like. Well, I mean, he describes his yeah. Special experience. God, god. If you, I watch Frank like once a month. It's a fun movie, man. If you haven't seen Frank, you've got you've got Frank's go. head over here. Yeah, I actually have like a <laughs> a replica replica, <laughs> not an exact copy. In, well, you know. I didn't have paper mache. All I had was a cardboard box. So I just went to town. That's not bad. Boy. Yeah, it works. It's Fun stuff. Nose fell off. No. But, well. I mean, besides that. Yeah. I, I, we are off topic again. Shit. Yeah, definitely. Watch Frank, guys. Definitely watch Frank if you haven't seen it. And watch the Glorious Batches if you haven't seen it, which at this yeah, point, if you just, haven't, what are you if, doing? If, uh, if Michael Fassbender's in a movie, just watch just it. Just watch it. Well, with the exception of Assassin's Creed and Jonah Hex. Did you see Assassin's Actually, Creed? Actually, watch Jonah Hex, because Michael Fassbender's character is hilarious in that Did movie. Did you see Assassin's Creed? No. Okay, I haven't either. Heard it was garbage. Not surprising. Um. All right, so thank you for listening, everyone. That is, again, 2011 Shame, directed by Steve McQueen. Uh, please leave us 
some feedback on iTunes, and you can also subscribe while you're there. Yeah. Uh, you can also like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Silver Linings Playlist. You can drop us a message or a post on our wall with a movie recommendation that you would like us to tackle to find a silver lining into. Uh, but we already have a, a next week's episode laid out. So You, you got a clue for I him? do have a clue for next week. And this is more just general life advice, I think, also, rather than We've just... We've been doing that for a lot of clues. <laughs> it applies to the movie, but also just to life in general. This is a shorter episode this week, but I think next week we have a lot to talk about. Because Shame is a very direct movie in terms of what's going on, yeah. so you can only tackle so much. But Next week's going to be interesting. Next week's going to be interesting, and my clue for next week, and again, general life advice, is uh, check your credit card statements. Real life. Real life. Real life. So again, thank you for listening, everyone. Please tune in next week, and as always, Excelsior. Excelsior.